Last time, we talked about how this freely vibrating system can be modeled as a spring mass damper system. Now, we're gonna do something completely different. This time, we're gonna get our spring, connect it to a rope, and loop it around a stepper motor to incite some vibration. The motor can rotate at multiple different frequencies, so let's see what this does to our mass. Well, I did six different experiments, each being excited by six different frequencies, and I noticed this crazy behavior. They all seem to oscillate with different amplitudes. Somehow, the stepper motor causes large vibration near 2.5 Hz, but relatively small vibration elsewhere. Why? Well, just like before, let's start by making a model of our system. It'll consist of an ideal spring, a damper, and an external force, F0 cosine omega t, which is used to model the effect of the stepper motor. This omega is the excitation frequency, and in our case, is the angular speed of the stepper motor. Applying Newton's laws to all forces on the block will produce the following differential equation. It turns out, after solving this, we get the following equation of motion. And notice it consists of two parts. One is called the transient response, which is identical to the equation of motion of the free response from last time. And the other is called the steady state response, which has two important terms, capital X and phi. Now, I've already made a video showing how we can solve for these terms. But the end result is this. Capital X is equal to this expression, and phi is equal to this expression. They are called the steady state amplitude and steady state phase, respectively. But what does this equation really mean? Well, let's make a simulation. Once I start my simulation, I notice this. Notice how it looks kind of crazy at first, but later, as time goes on, it smooths out and we get a nice, neat cosine wave. What's happening here? Well, in the beginning, the transient response hasn't been damped out yet, and so we see the messy influence of the initial conditions. However, these damp out exponentially fast, so after some time, all we see is the steady state response, capital X cosine omega t minus phi. This means that our steady state amplitude, capital X, is really just the long-term amplitude of our vibrating system. I've plotted this equation for capital X versus the excitation frequency so that we can see what this does intuitively. If we let the system go and excite with a fairly low excitation frequency, we notice a corresponding low amplitude once the transients dies out. And if we excite the system at a very high frequency, then we also get a small steady state amplitude. But if we set the stepper motor to spin at just the right frequency, then we get something called resonance and the amplitude skyrockets. It turns out that this phenomenon occurs when the excitation frequency approximately equals the natural frequency, omega n. So let's see if this checks out with experiments. If we track maximum displacements and connect the dots like this, then we notice it does actually look similar to the steady state amplitude formula we showed earlier. But plotting the formula is one thing, gaining intuition as to why this happens is another. For that, we'll need to look at the steady state phase phi, which is a constant that only varies between zero and 180 degrees. Well, let's drive our system at a low frequency again and show the displacement vector in black. Notice how synced up the driving force is with our displacement. This should be no surprise because the driving force is F0 cosine omega t and the steady state displacement is capital X cosine omega t minus phi. And since phi is close to zero for this situation, they should be very closely synced. But now, let's excite at a very high frequency. Notice the force vector and the displacement vector are totally different now. They're 180 degrees out of phase. Why would this happen? 
Likewise, let's excite at the natural frequency, which occurs when phi is exactly equal to 90 degrees. Why would these phase values correspond to these vastly different amplitudes? Well, if we plot our steady state displacement versus time, and our driving force versus time, then we can show how aligned these two waves are at different values of phase. Why would phase values near zero and near 180 degrees correspond to low amplitudes? And why would phase values of 90 degrees correspond to such a high amplitude value? The answer comes by plotting the velocity v. Notice, when phi is equal to 90 degrees, the velocity of the block is always perfectly in the same direction as the force. And so this means when the force is downwards, the velocity is downwards. And when the force is upwards, the velocity is upwards. This is why the amplitude of motion is so high when exciting at the natural frequency. It's because the force acts with the motion of the block. Coincidentally, this also explains why the amplitude at low and high frequencies is so low. It's because in these cases, the force and the velocity aren't well aligned, and so the average power into the system is much less. Now, admittedly, I'm avoiding some of the technical details regarding work and power here. So if you're interested, I've made a video describing the mathematics behind this phenomena. So that's it. We've managed to find a mathematical way to describe harmonic forcing of a one degree of freedom spring mass damper system. In the next video, we'll build on this idea and talk about what happens when we get a second mass involved. See you then.